I had uh, been going to school in Baltimore and I saw a poster to study for summer. And I ended up going to the south of France to study sculpture mainly. And I quit painting and I started drawing at that period of time and then I also did sculpture and that began sort of a whole relationship with, with France and Italy and uh, Italy more so. I went on to Florence just after that. I couldn't afford to go there either. So I couldn't afford school at all. Don't ask me how I got this illustrious, great academic career because I did it on like zero budget. I didn't have any money and I just showed up. And at that time there was a director there whose name was Jules Midoff, who's also a painter and he directed the school in Florence. And I showed up and he said, are you going to school? And I'm like, no, I can't really afford it. And you know, I, but I had mentioned that I was Native American and he says, well, a Native American can come to my school and you can work it off and you'll, we'll figure it out. Why don't you just show up for school on Monday? And I did. And so that worked out really well. I don't know how important it was for me to be a Native American in painter or artist in Italy because I was just trying to be an artist. I was trying to find my direction and try to find something that I could call my own and look at historically what art was and that's what more that relationship with Europe was that I could see the history of art and understand some of the early painters, the origins, the, tra the transitions and movements and, and where could I possibly fit into any of that. So I just looked at the larger spectrum of art, brought that back to my mi microcosm of Santa Fe and being a Native American painter and use what I could use and move forward as, as a contemporary Native American painter. I've worked stylistically in many different mediums. I've done sculpture and jewelry and painting and printmaking, but also the styles that have come out of that, which have been everything from black and white abstract drawings on a large scale to modernist New Mexican landscapes influenced a lot by the early 30s and 40s um, artists and, and mainly the Taos School of Painting and also working with images that are directly part of my culture of being Navajo and working with the, the, the ideas and the concept of deities and spirit figures and the belief systems of, of well I think many southwestern native cultures that's been a heavy part of of the imagery that I've worked with for a while. And I experiment with a lot of different other things that sometimes I just make and create and collage and build and deconstruct and I add and I subtract and, and all of it is part of a process. I don't think of it as being anything other than my own work. I just paint with different hats on. You know, some days I, I come into the studio and I'll throw on the baseball cap and splash paint around and then other days I'm thinking, you know, with, with, with a cowboy hat on or something and, and working on a historic landscape. It's been really part of how I work as a New Mexican artist. Like, how does New Mexico influence me? And where does that come into my work and, and the inspiration? And so the landscape is really hard to ignore as a painter. When you see like the movement, the, the light, the rhythms, it really has its own spiritual dialogue with the people it inspires, with the artists that it inspires.